Hello there, uh, people, place, things, and other things. I'm so sorry I have not been around for a while. Uh, I've been busy with stuff, um, and I'm very sorry for that. But uh, because I've been gone so long, I thought I would subject myself, think, myself to something truly awful and horrid just for your guys' pleasure. We're going to read um, Fifty Shades of Grey, because today I just flipped open to a random page, and what I read was truly awful. I did not buy this book. This is unfortunately a family member of mine that will go nameless, my mother. And we're going to read it, and I'm gonna, uh, we're going to see how far I can get in this piece of crap. I'm not going to read it all right now. That'd be a long video, and I don't think I could handle it all at one time. But we're going to read this, and hopefully it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to finish that sentence with. Um, but we're going to read Fifty Shades of Grey. And uh, before I start, if you guys have any ideas for videos for me to do, please um, let me know, because this is the best I got. <laughs> Let's start. My friend Holly says, please do read this. Please, please do. Please do. Okay. <clears throat> got to get my reading voice on. That's not my reading voice. That's just some weird British voice. I always jump to British. Here we go. Chapter 1 of Fifty Shades of Grey. I scowl with frustration at myself in the mirror. Damn my hair. <laughs> it <laughs> okay, it just won't behave. And damn Catherine Kavanaugh for being ill and subjecting me to this ordeal. I should be studying for my final exams, which are next week. Yet, here I am, trying to brush my hair into submission. I, I'm with you on that one. I must not sleep with it wet. I must not sleep with it wet. Reciting this mantra several times, I attempt once more to bring it under control with the brush. I roll my eyes in exasperation, uh, and gaze at the pale, brown-haired girl with blue eyes too big for her face, staring back at me and give up. Who's that girl? This is like it's almost like she doesn't know. Like there's just some girl behind her, just and eyes too big for her face. So there's like. Man, this is the imagery is perfect. My only option is to restrain my wayward hair in a ponytail and hope that I look semi presentable. Kate is my roommate, and she has chosen today of all days to succumb to the flu. D Damn it, Kate! Getting the flu, and she's already having a bad hair day, and then you have the flu. What's your problem, Kate? Go die. Jesus. Therefore, she cannot attend the interview she's arranged to do with some mega-industrialist tycoon I've never heard of for the student newspaper. <laughs> so far, I don't know if this girl's like a middle school, high school. We'll find out. Hopefully this is a middle school from what I've heard of this book. So I have been volunteered. I have final exams to cram for and one essay to finish, and I'm supposed to work, be working this afternoon, but no! Today I have to drive 165 miles to downtown Seattle in order to meet the engineer, engineer, CEO of Great Enterprises Holdings, Inc. As an exceptional entrepreneur and major benefactor of our university, his time is extraordinarily precious. Much more precious than mine. But he was granted he has granted Kate an interview. A real coup, she tells me. Damn her extracurricular activities. This this protagonist hates Kate, and I'm with her. Kate's got the flu, she has extracurricular activities. I hate Kate. Kate is huddled on the couch in the living room. End of paragraph. Anna... Oh, sorry, this is Kate. Anna, I'm sorry. It took me nine months to get this interview. <laughs> it will take another six to reschedule. And both have graduated by then. <laughs> As the editor, I can't blow this off. Please, Kate begs me in this rasping, sore throat vo I got it perfect, in this rasping, in her rasping, sore throat voice. How does she do it? Even ill, she manages to piss me, no, she looks gamine and gorgeous. I don't know if that's pronounced that right. Who cares? Strawberry blonde hair. Strawberry blonde. It's, it's strawberries are red. Strawberry blonde hair in place and green eyes bright, although now red rimmed and runny. Runny eyes. I ignore my pang of unwelcome sympathy. Of course I'll go, Kate. You shouldn't get back. You should get back to bed. Would you like some NyQuil or Tylenol? NyQuil, please. 
Here are the questions in my digital recorder. Just press record here. Make notes I'll transcribe it all. I know nothing about him, I murmur, trying and failing to suppress my rising panic. The questions will see you through. Go. It's a long drive. I don't want you to be late. I'm with this girl's plight so far. Okay, I'm going. Get back to bed. I made you some soup to heat up later. I stare at her fondly. Only for you, Kate, would I do this. Even though I've spent the first page of this book just saying, Damn, Kate, I'd do anything for you. I will. Oh, that's wrong. I will. Good luck. And thanks, Anna. As usual, you're my lifesaver. Gathering my backpack, I smile wryly at her, then head out the door to my car. I cannot believe I have let Kate talk me into this. But then Kate can talk almost to anyone to anything. She'll make an exceptional journalist. She's articulate, strong, persuasive, argumentative, beautiful, and she's my dearest, dearest friend. Wow, the TV's making me look blue. Anyways, the roads are clear as I set off from Vancouver, Washington. That's where Holly's from. My destination is the headquarters. I um, like how I change voices three times for this girl's... This girl. Mr. Gray's Global Enterprise. It's a huge 20-story office building. All curved glass and steel and an architect. Utilitarian fantasy. Utilitarian. It's a big word for this author. With Gray House written discreetly and steal over the glass front doors. It's a quarter to two when I arrive, greatly relieved that I'm late. Not late. I <laughs> greatly relieved that I'm late. Greatly relieved I'm not late as I walk into the enormous and frankly intimidating glass, steel, and white sandstone lobby. It's really heating up. Behind the solid sandstone desk, a very attractive groomed blonde young woman smiles pleasantly at me. She's wearing the sharpest charcoal suit jacket and white shirt I have ever seen. She looks immaculate. Immaculate. I'm here to, I'm here to see Mr. Gray, Anastasia Steele for Catherine Cavanaugh. Excuse me one moment, Miss Steele. She arches her eyebrow, eyebrow as I stand self-consciously before her. I'm beginning to wish I'd borrowed one of Kate's formal blazers rather than worn my navy blue jacket. I have made an effort and worn my one and only skirt, my sensible blown knee, my sensible blown, blown knee, my sensible brown, oh man, where did I, I'm gone now, my sensible brown knee length boots and a blue sweater. For me, this is smart. I tuck one of the escaped tendrils of my hair behind my ear, and I pretend she doesn't intimidate me. Who gets so intimidated by a, uh, a secretary? Like, I never walk into an office building and just go, Um, hi. You're intimidating. Miss Kevin, Miss Kevin is expected. Please sign in here, Miss Steele. You'll want the last elevator on the right to press for the 20th floor. She smiles kindly at me, amused no doubt. As I sign in, what's she amused by? She's coming in that jacket. Mm -mm. Mr. Gray is not gonna like Miss Steele at all. Miss Steele probably stole those clothes. I don't fit him here at all. Nothing changes. I inwardly sigh. How do you inwardly sigh? <gasps> like, you sighs or you exhale, and they're an outward. <sighs> not. You have to like suck in air. <gasps> That's an inward sigh. She inward. I inwardly sigh, <gasps> thanking her. I walk over to the bank of elevators and past the two security men who are both far more smartly dressed than I am in their well-cut black suits. This is great so far. All I've got is her hair and fashion statements. The elevator whisks me at at terminal velocity in the twentieth floor. <laughs> the door. Okay, so the author basically didn't understand how to make an elevator ride um, interesting, so she said, terminal velocity. So, like, you just have to imagine Anna just going, ah! and I'm in another large lobby, again all glass, steel, and white sandstone. I'm confronted by another desk of sandstone. Confronted. The desk is, like, in her face, confronting her. She's got really, I'm, I'm, conf okay. I'm confronted by a desk of sandstone and another young blonde woman, this time dressed impeccably in black and white, who rises to greet me. 
Miss Steele, could you wait here, please? She points to a seated area of white leather chairs. Could you wait here, please? Wait here. Don't leave. Behind the leather chairs is a spacious glass wall meeting room with an equally spacious dark wood table and at least 20 matching chairs around it. Beyond that, there is a floor... Okay, I'm gonna... Okay, it's a stunning vista and I'm momentarily paralyzed by the view. Whoa. That's the last word on the page. I'm, I'm gonna skip past some of this crap. It's so boring. She tells, in this room, there's five chairs. They happen to all be white. There's one brown table that's made from oak. And there's this rug that's red, and it really ties the room together. I sit down, fish the questions from my backpack, and go through them, inwardly cursing Kate for not providing me with a brief biography. I know nothing. I know nothing about this man. I'm about to interview. He could be 90 or he could be 30. The uncertainty is galling and my nerves resurface, making me fidget. So she's sitting there reading these notes and just... Okay. I've never been comfortable with one-on-one -on -one interviews, preferring the anon... 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 anon I can't say this. An anon... 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 Anonymity. An anon anonymity. I know the word. I just can't say it right now. Anonymity. Anonymity. This sucks. Anonymity. 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 That's pathetic. <laughs> okay, we're gonna skip that paragraph. That's pathetic. I roll my eyes on myself. Get a grip, steel. Judging from the building which is too clinical and modern. I guess Gray is in his 40s, fit, tanned, and fair-haired to match the rest of the personnel. Another elegant, flawlessly dressed blonde, okay, he's got a thing for blondes, comes out as a large door to the right. What is it with all the immaculate blondes? I'm like reading her mind, literally. It's like Stepford here. Good, good pickup. Taking a deep breath, I stand up. Miss Steele, the latest blonde asks, Yes! I croak and clear my throat. <clears throat> yes! There, that sounded more confident. <laughs> oh, okay. Mr. Gray will see you in a moment. May I take your jacket? Oh, please. I struggle out of the jacket. Have you been offered any refreshments? Um, no. Oh, dear. Is blonde number one in trouble? Blonde number two frowns and eyes the young woman at the desk. Would you like tea, coffee, water? She asks, turning her attention back to me. Glass of water, thank you. Olivia, please fetch Miss Steele a glass of water. Her voice is stern. Olivia scoots up and scurries to a door on the other side of the floor. You're Olivia, you can't screw around like that. You gotta be giving people their water when they want it. Olivia, you're gonna get killed. My apologies, Miss Steele. Olivia's our new intern. Please be seated, and Mr. Gray will be another five minutes. Olivia returns with a glass of ice water, at velocity speed. Perhaps Mr. Gray insists on all his employees being blonde. I'm wondering, idly, if that's legal. When the office door opens and a tall, illegally dressed, attractive African-American man with a short dreads exits. I have definitely worn the wrong clothes. He turns and says to the door, Go fish, wait, Gray. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that's a voice. Go fish, wait, Gray. I don't hear the reply. He turns, sees me, and smiles, his dark eyes crinkling at the corners. Olivia has jumped up and called the elevator. She seems to excel at jumping from her seat. She's more nervous than me. Good afternoon, ladies, he says as he departs through the sliding doors. Mr. Gray will steal now, Miss Steele. Do go through, blonde number two says. I stand rather shakily. I stand rather shakily. Where did I go? I said I'm taking to suppress my nerves. Gathering up my backpack, I abandon my glass of water and make my way to the partially open door. You don't need to knock. Let's go in. She smiles kindly. I push open the door and stumble through, tripping over my own feet and falling head first into the office. Wow, this girl sucks. She can't even walk. It's pathetic. Double, double crap. Me and my two left feet. I am on my hands and knees in the doorway to Mr. Gray's office, and gentle hands are around me, helping me to stand. I am so embarrassed. Damn my clumsiness. I have to steal myself to glance, uh, to glance up. Holy cow. He's so young. That's what we got so far. Um, I'm done for now.
I'll probably post another one tomorrow because that wasn't very entertaining. Where's all the sex? It's supposed to be a bunch of... There it is. Anyways, have a great day. And again, if you have any ideas for this channel, please let me know. Any more whiteboard videos or anything like that. I'll probably keep doing this just for my own interest. Because it probably will get funny later on after she's done talking about everything. Like, it's so intense. I was confronted by the desk and plot number one. Dick sells at jumping and I took this elevator of terminal velocity. Pfft. Anyways, have a great day. And until next time. Go on a Bye.